Could Kirito ever beat Yuki if, say, Yuki had lived longer and they had competed in more monthly tournaments in ALO? It depends. When rank 1 and rank 2 of comparable skill fight in anything, it's rare that rank 1 will just dominate them forever with no back and forth. It's much easier to learn from others than it is to keep innovating after all. First at the top, I think it's important to address a couple of misconceptions. The first being the claim that Kirito isn't playing VR remotes very much at this time. Well, sure, he's not been playing 24-7 like he had prior to Aincrad, he's still very clearly been playing a lot given that he's able to contend and beat a lot of ALO's best players in a duel. Remember, he reset his character at the end of Fairy Dance, so to be able to contend like this, he would have to be playing a lot in order to catch up. The other really big misconception is what Lizbeth told Asna about Yuki's first fight against Kirito. A lot of people took Lizbeth's word as gospel here and think Kirito only lost because he wasn't trying his best due to not using two swords, when actually it's pretty much the opposite. Firstly, what Lizbeth says here is her own speculation. You shouldn't put too much weight in her speculation. I mean, if I'm trying trying to find out the intricacies of hitting metal very hard of a hammer, then yeah, she's my girl. But when it comes to who I'm trusting with dueling analysis, I'd much rather put my faith in someone like Leifa, one of the best duelists in ALO. Leifa said that she thinks Kirito was, in fact, trying his best, he just got outplayed. It is what it is, it happens to the best of us. Secondly, in player versus player combat, using two swords is actually the worst choice. Think of it like playing Dark Souls with a Dance Dance Revolution map. Sure, it looks impressive and I'm sure it's fun to do, but is it the method that's going to help you beat the game the most? No, very clearly not. In ALO, outside of sword skills, sword fighting is completely unassisted by the system. As such, blade skill is somewhat the same as it is in real life. I say somewhat because they are still piloting superhuman avatars that are capable of superhuman feats. Be that as it may, for the most part it does translate pretty well. It's why Leafa got so good at dueling so quickly, as she can relate her kendo skill. We know that dual swords in real life isn't good for the most part, the skinny being that they get in the way of each other. This wouldn't be as much of an issue for Kirito as it would be for other players, as he is more used to the way that the blades move and interact from his experience in Aincrad. There is a huge difference, however, in being competent in something and having mastered the thing enough to take on the very best in that field. With dual blades, Kirito should be able to take on low, maybe even mid-level players completely fine, but against the best, the pressure would be too much and he would get caught. The most most he could hope for is that during the initial shock of the gimmick, he catches the opponent off guard and manages to score a win, which is what happened in the fight against General Eugene. This is not something that could work against Yuki though, as we already saw Asna try to cheese Yuki with the punch skill and that she almost certainly would not know about. Even with her posture completely destroyed, Yuki was able to respond perfectly to Asna's attack and put her in a terrible position. The other problem with dual swords in ALO is dual wielding is not an implemented skill. Meaning that there are no sword skills for it. Sword skills is where you deal the big daddy damage, so not having any is a massive disadvantage. Kirito has tried to manually recreate dual wielding sword skills using the OSS system, but so far he has only managed to create the most basic ones. Nothing that could make up for the sizable disadvantage on not having the large array of sword skills available to a single sword. He could use skill connect, which is chaining together one-handed sword skills from either sword in succession. The problem with this world is that the timing is extremely precise and unreliable. If he messes up the execution of it, which is quite likely, then he will be stuck in the stun sluggish effect that happens after you use a sword skill. This isn't a bad gamble to take in PvE as your party mates can cover for you in the event that you don't get the timing. In PvP though, it is an awful gamble as if the dice roll doesn't come up your way then the match will be over then and there. So now we've established that using dual wielding against a high level opponent in PvP is a bad idea, but let's go over both Yuki's and Kirito's strengths to find out if there is anywhere that Kirito can get an edge. Yuki's biggest strengths come down to three main areas. Her capacity to learn, her unreal absolutely godly reactions, and her insane execution. How do I know this? Well, as for her capacity to learn, this is fairly obvious for a few key examples. The most obvious one being the flying mechanic in ALO. To fly unrestricted in ALO without a controller is one of the first major hurdles that players face. While many are able to do it, this hurdle is by no means easy. There are a lot of players who are never able to do this and even some that just about managed to but their control of the movement without the controller is not refined. Making this mechanic a great way to get an idea 
idea of a player's capacity to learn. For example, Silica started playing ALO with the rest of the gang at the end of Fairy Dance. However, it took her an entire six months before she could fly and fight at the same time. So, we can safely assume that it must have taken her quite a while before she was able to fly without the controller. Meanwhile, Krita was able to fly pretty well without the controller in just 10 minutes of practice, showing us the difference in learning speeds. Yuki was not only able to use voluntary flight, but master it to the extent of being completely undefeated against some of the best that ALO has to offer in aerial combat, all within an extremely short time period. The second example is how quickly she caught up and surpassed veteran players in different VR MMOs such as Asuka Empire. This was a very similar game to ALO, just ninja themed. As for her reactions, it's fairly obvious from just watching her fight, but if that's not good enough for you, we have a testament from the lightning flash herself, Asuna. During the fight against Yuki, she bore witness to it firsthand. Even with Yuki's posture destroyed from Asuna's cheese attack, Yuki reacted to and parried every single hit of Asuna's sword skill. It cannot be understated how absolutely insane a feat this is. Most of the playbase in ALO can't even parry normal attacks. Sword skills in ALO are a system-assisted attack that speed up the user to an inhuman degree. It's why original sword skills are so rare and hard to make, as you have to perform the moves for the sword skill with an extremely minimal margin for error, almost as fast as the system would perform it, but without the system's assistance. It's something only a handful of the player base are capable of doing, and that's with months of religious practice to achieve it. To be able to casually respond to such attacks on the fly from any position is something that we will likely never see from any player in ALO ever again. As for execution, we know this from the fact that she is the creator of the fastest, longest, and most precise original sword skill in the game, Mother's Rosario. As I mentioned before, making original sword skills is the single most difficult thing that you can do in ALO. As such, even just making one that is four hits in length is a monumental effort. Asuna is no slouch on the execution front, but even for her, it took her several months to make one just five hits in length. Yuki is not in ALO for that long of a time, and yet she managed to craft an original sword skill that is 11 hits in length, over double the length of the best Asuna could achieve at that time, and a full three hits more than arguably the strongest player before Yuki arrived could manage. So, overall, in terms of adaptation and mechanical ability, it just doesn't get better than Yuki. She is a generational talent that will likely never be matched again. So, what about Kurito's strengths? Well, of course his execution is impressive too, though not in the same realm as Yuki's. What I would say is his biggest strength that he holds over everyone else is actually his creativity. Many a times in the series, we have seen Kurito been outmatched in terms of skill, strength, or even just equipment. But his outside of the box thinking allows him to come up with crazy ideas in order to come ahead. Some of the best examples of this is when he used a combination of the sun to obstruct Eugene's vision and a second sword to catch him off guard guard, as well as when he used the explosions from the mage's fire attack during the fight in the bridge in order to hide himself while he used illusion magic, making it look from their perspective like some sort of mid-level boss had just appeared, allowing him to capitalize on the panic and confusion in order to score a win. We know from his two previous fights against Yuki that he cannot beat her if he engages her in a straight up gentleman's fight, so if he wants any chance of winning just one duel against her, it's going to have to be for applying these creative of strategies. So, with that said, is it possible? Is there a strategy that Kurisu could come up with to overcome the absolute sword? Honestly, I'm not really convinced. It's tough. As we already saw Asuna try to cheese Yuki, as I mentioned earlier, during her fight against Yuki, Asuna very quickly realized that she was never going to be able to beat Yuki in a straight up fight. So, she did the only thing she thought that could give her a chance, which is to exploit Yuki's inexperience in player versus player duels by cheesing her with something that she almost certainly would not know about, which is the punch skill that you can only obtain by going to a very specific place. The tactic worked exactly as Asuna had hoped. She got exactly what she wanted. The punch landed and she succeeded in destroying Yuki's posture, creating an opening for her to use a sword skill on Yuki. But the tactic working is exactly what makes it seem so doomed for Kurito, as even from that very disadvantaged position, Asuna was not even close to making Yuki sweat. She perfectly parried 
every single hit of Asuna's sword skill and completely flip the situation on its head. Because of this, I just can't really think of something that Kirito could do to capitalize on Yuki. Even if he succeeds in doing something like an extremely convincing fate, like he did to win the duel against Asuna and Aincrad, Yuki would just respond to the situation and counter anything Kirito attempts. Her reactions and execution is just simply too good. There is a reason she earned the nickname Absolute Sword after all. So while I don't think Kurita would be able to win, hey, I'm not Kurita. Maybe you can come up with some crazy plan that I just can't conceive of. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments down below. Maybe you can come up with some sort of crazy plan for Kurita to use to win. Also, please do not forget to like the video so other SEO fans can find it. I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers this year and I'm doing everything I can to achieve it. If I do hit it before the end of July, I will rank every Asuna design while in Asuna cosplay. So with that being said, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.